And it was just hard. It was hard to, to let him go for good. And everyone's just so used to doing things in a particular way. And then when that kind of that final thing happens, it's like, oh my gosh, my life is never going to be the same. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm close with my kids. I work at it. We work at it. But it, but it gets to be fun. Oh, you're making me cry. Stop oh, I'm doing sorry. that. Empty nesters, what's next? Where do we go? And my next guest, Carrie Hoffman, is here to inspire you that there's it's just beginning. Carrie, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Okay, good. So, okay, empty nesters, this is your jam. Tell us, yeah. about, tell us about a little bit of you. And is it over once you drop the kids at college? Oh, gosh, no, absolutely not. Yeah, so my story is I have three kids, two grandkids, and um, my youngest, we dropped off in Colorado about four years ago, and that was like the permanent, like graduated from college and, you know, done, got a job, moved out, and um, we're all very close, and it was just hard. It was hard to, to let him go for good and, well, not for good, you know, the, the roles change, right, but you just everyone's just so used to doing things in a particular way. And then when that kind of that final thing happens, it's like, oh my gosh, my life is never going to be the same. And so it took me a while to figure out that I didn't have to be sad, right? I, I It was an opportunity to do me. And I was a young mom. Um, my first was born when I was 19. So I've been a mom longer than I've been alive, right? You know, whatever, however that goes, longer than half my life anyway. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I would hear about all their adventures, you know, my son in Colorado goes skiing and my son, up, you know, up the road a ways goes, they go hiking and my daughter does all these, you know, downtown things. And I wasn't doing any of that. I was listening to them and their adventures and I wasn't having any. And I just thought, why am I not doing that? And so it's kind of become my passion. This my purpose is to help people say it's your turn. You you know your life is probably more than half over when the kids leave, and there's a lot of living left to do. And so I feel like we should not be afraid to do that. So I think it's just it opens up a whole new chapter, a whole new realm of possibility. So okay, I I have one in now. He is in his third year. And my daughter's a junior and I, I'm like holding on to everything. I can't even like to what that looks like. Yeah. And, and yet I, this, this is what crowns me is working with other entrepreneurs and bestsellers who have vision. Cause I, I will be a mess as has someone that is that I will be a mess. So what, what, what does it look like? And what are, what are five things that get people off the couch? You know, I think, I think what people struggle with women, especially struggle with at this point in their, in our lives is we don't even have the mental space to dream. It's like, we've been so busy raising kids and, you know, maybe we dreamed about, Oh, when I, you know, when I'm when I grow up, I'm going to move to or move to Europe or travel a lot or write a book or, you know, all of these great things. And then, you know, family and they're, it's great being a mom and having those responsibilities and doing all those wonderful things. But you kind of lose the dream a little bit. You forget about it. It gets put up on a shelf. It collects dust, you know, all of those kinds of things. So I think the first thing people need to do is find the space to dream, find the space to think about what you really want. What do you want to do? And then, you know, for a dream to become reality, you have to have, you have to take action. You know, you may have to make a plan, but you have to take some kind of action. So, you know, I think if you're having trouble being sad or, you know, getting off the couch or whatever, and it's just emptiness, sadness, and not something else, you know, make a commitment to take one small step, even if it's just pick up the phone and call about an art class or something that you're dreaming of. Um, Mel Robbins talks about the um, 54321 method. It's like, you know, say you're going to do something, count backwards from five. When you get to zero, you get up and do it or it's gone. And it like gives you kind of the, the snaps to kind of get up and, and start moving. Um, but I would say, you know, give your, make a list, 
make a list of all these things that you might want to do and then maybe prioritize them, you know, make a plan. If you want to travel, figure out how much it's going to cost you, how long it's going to take you to save it and, and, you know, plan it out. You can't just sit on the couch for the rest of your life and think that life is going to happen for you. You have to make it happen. So. So I want to rewind that a little bit and I love the Mel Robbins because I didn't know that. Okay. Um, So it starts with, the question, then there's so many women that, that I come in contact with and men, um, the, okay, now that it's quiet, right? There's a moment for you, the question, what do you want? The last time that someone had asked that is, is is, they can't remember. So it starts with that question, right? Right. Right. So, so tell us a little bit of when, how that kicked in from the, you know, my, my last, last was your daughter, right? Your daughter was your, my last one was my youngest son. Uh huh. Okay. And, and so, um, I'm still like, my, my daughter's like right here. So that's I understand it. completely. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness sakes. And you know, with gratitude, because I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm close with my kids. I work at it. We work at it. But it, but it gets to be fun. Oh, you're making me cry. Stop oh, I'm doing sorry. that. <laughs> um, but it's it is with gratitude that you've built their lives and your lives around them, with them, for them, right. and together. Right? Right. right. And now they're going off, and so now it begins. So what was that moment for you when you said, "Okay, um, now what"? When did it hit you that you needed to get into motion? I think it was, I was talking to a very dear neighbor and um, she said, you know, you know, about being sad. And and she's like, you know, Carrie, we, our purpose as parents is to raise them so that they can go off into the world and do things. She said, you know, the saddest thing is when they can't do that yeah, because you didn't give them what they needed to do that. And I, and she said, you should, you know, give yourself some pats on the back and some snaps because you guys prepared them to go off and be successful human beings and adults and, you know, all of those kinds of things. So, she, you know, it was just kind of that kind of feeling like, you know, change is hard. You know, you, you we've got these, you know, neural pathways that we've built up as super highways over time and, and, and changing some of that is really hard work. It takes time, but I, I read an article and it was um, shortly after that conversation, I read an article and it was like the average uh, lifespan of a woman in the United States is 79.1 years. So I'm 55. My life is way more than half over. I mean, wait, wait, maybe- wait, wait. I'm causing you there. I'm, I'm signing up for the 150 plan. I'm waiting for that <laughs> next coming in. So we're clear. That's yes. the path that I'm on. So okay. Continue. Yeah. I hope to live beyond 79 years. My mother is 80. Um, my mother-in-law is 90, but you know, when, I mean, the odds of me living to 110 are pretty slim, right? I mean, just the way the world works. Um, and I'm not sure I want to live to 110, but I, um, I just said, I, you know, I cannot keep saying I'll do it later. I can't, it's just this moment. Like I just realized later is a big fat lie. You either do it or you don't like you're, I have this fear of getting to the end of my that's life in itself, all the whole journey. Right. Right. Yeah. Whether you're an empty nester or, you know, a newlywed or a new mom, you know, we keep saying, well, I'll do it when the kids leave. I'll do it when I get a new job. I'll do it when, whatever, when I get in shape or, you know, whatever it is. And that may never come. You know, how many times do we hear these stories about, you know, somebody leaves the house in the morning, doesn't come home. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to get to the end of my life and say, man, I really wish I could do it over. Or, you know, I want to make my kids proud that, you know, I lived like Rose from the Titanic after the ship went down and, you know, had all these adventures and wasn't afraid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. So what does that look like now? Because you're here, and by the way, this is a, Carrie was one of the finest I chose <laughs> from the speaker talent search. And so this is, this is what this looks like. Yep. And, um, and you radiated, I, you came right through. I said, I, I, I want her on my show. Oh, thank so you, you so did much. that. You did that. So what are you up to? And, and, and what is it like to work with you? And 
And what's, what's, you're building your legacy, right? What does that look like? Yeah. So I have, you know, I've started a coaching business. I, you know, I specialize with empty nest women and really giving them a space to dream, a space to think about what's possible. You know, my favorite thing to think about is the power of that's impossible. That word possibility is just so big and wide and amazing that I think if we step into that, you know, who knows? I, you know, all of this, the, the brain research about, you know, if you think something is good or bad, it is whatever you think it is. If you don't think that you can start a business, then you can't. But if you believe in yourself, if you, you know, if you work, I do a lot of work with positive intelligence and, you know, just these, yeah. I that on your website. Yeah. So just these, uh, you know, the voices in your head that keep you from doing things or that, that just kind of tear you down, you know, the way we talk to ourselves, um, like you can't do that. That wouldn't be, people will make fun of you or, you know, all of those kinds of things. You're not ready for that. Or, you know, I think, I, I think once you get to this point in life, you say, I don't really care what you think. I'm ready to do this because I, I only have so well, however much time left that I have. And I want to, I, you know, I want to make a difference and I, you know, I, I want to get in shape. And so, you know, I've been working on that for a couple of years and I, you know, I want to travel and I want to, you know, learn how to do Facebook and speak another language and play the piano. And those things are all on my list. You know, I can't do it all at once. But, you know, I can certainly do pieces of that at a time with the hope that, you know, someday, you know, I'll be able to play and play at a party and sing a song or something. I don't know. But, you know, Wait there's just second. so much to do it. Wait a second. I, I, again, possibility and bringing in and, and putting it out into the universe. Mm -hmm. so you're right. Clear, Carrie. Yeah. You just said on on video <laughs> in the universe and to everyone else listening you get to play the piano in front of people at a party. We yep. all heard it. Yep. And that's how it goes, right? That's exactly. Yep. Yeah. My husband and I have a vision board that we update pretty regularly. Some of it's together stuff. Some of it's his stuff. Some of it's mine. Um, but I think you really do have to put it out there. And once you put it out there, the intention's there. And that's not hippy dippy stuff. Like that's for real stuff. And I, I think if if women can really think about what they want and how to get there, you know, what what's the big dream? What what almost scares you to just take the time, make the decision that this is where I, what I'm going after right now. This is where I ultimately want to be or what I want to do. Make a plan, take some action, be accountable to yourself. You know, I think that's the beauty of having a coach is that they can help you learn how to do that. But, you know, your sister can help you to do that, too. You know, it's just and that's, I love that you're segueing into exactly where I'm going here is that the one piece I would say that don't do it alone. First of all, it's yeah. not fun. Second of all, all of those, you know, building in the accountability, the opening your mind and sharing it and being in community is yeah. just so crucial. Wouldn't you agree? I uh, hundred percent. You know, I um I see all these Facebook groups and some of them are for people who are just super sad that, you know, their kids are gone, things are different. They don't know how to cope with that. And so they join these communities of kind of like-minded people. Right. So I kind of feel like some of that is keeping you down. Like you're in the swamp and you can't get out. But if you surround yourself with somebody else who wants to dream too, and not get to the end of their life and say, I, I did it all. I did everything I wanted to do. Those are the people that lift you up. Those are the people that motivate you, that that inspire you, that carry you through to the dream, right? If you, I, I really believe you need that that kind of a, a support system, not not people who are going to keep you where you are, but people who are going to get you where you want to be. That's a quote. That needs to be <laughs> on the book. I love that. All right, so. The, I was on the website. There's a few ways that people can get in touch with you. What would it look like to work with you? And how can people get in touch with you? So my, uh, you can find me on my website. Oops, there's my cat. She's yeah. visiting. Her name is Dora. Um, uh, the Power Impossible. Dora the Explorer, right? That's Perfect. her, exactly. Yes. Um, the Power Impossible, not impossible. Um, dot com. <laughs> yeah. And difference. you can reach me at Carrie at the power impossible dot com. All right, good. So and there's another thing, too, because I just found out this before I go. 
Carrie's actually a new mom. <laughs> I am. I am. I, I mean, I will admit my house is still pretty quiet. I used to like liken it to a crypt because it's just pretty quiet during the day. I work from home and uh, my husband's not here and those kinds of things. So um, we just adopted two black lab puppies last week. Um, they are adorable and sweet and super smart. Uh, their names are Laverne and Shirley. And yes, I'm dating myself. But, you know, it doesn't have to be lonely. I just, you know, now I just have puppies. So, um, so, you know, I recommend it. Like whatever makes you happy, do it. Find it and do it. You know, there's no rule that you have to have kids to have puppies. So. Look. I had them before and I'll have them after. And I'm at the, like, I, I, my, my cutoff is usually five. Do I have five now? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. All right, everyone, Carrie Hoffman, so fabulous to congratulations on the speaker talent search. Everyone, the power of it impossible. Power That's impossible. The power impossible. The link will be below. I go until next time. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks so much.